Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. Last night, we had our Prithvi Seva Sangha workshop on climate-friendly vacations. A very insightful and I feel startling workshop about what we do for recreation, what we do to the environment, for recreation. When we reflect on our earth, for many of us, for me, it makes me feel stress. It makes me scared. It makes me sad. And then trying to follow my own advice when I feel stress or feel scared or feel sad, I practice plea to pray, to lead, to engage, that helps me to accept. For some, they can't resonate with praying or even leading or even engaging. Another way to train ourselves in accepting is appreciating. The more appreciative we are of what we have, of who we are, the more we accept. Accept ourselves, accept others. Meaningful mornings is a training in acceptance. And if this could be branded in a secular sense, Meaningful Mornings is a workshop on Anger management, annoyance management, being afraid management. All of this is the utility of accepting. Our Bhagavad Gita is not a map that teaches us what to do is not. Our Bhagavad Gita is a map that teaches us who we are. It's important to know that distinction so that we don't dilute what our map is guiding us in. And this is logical. If you know who you are, you know what to do. On Thursdays, when I play soccer with this new team, then we arrange ourselves based on who we are. This person's slower, that person's faster, etc. Then we know what to do. That person's a striker, this person's a stopper. Makes sense. However, this is not strongly sequential. Only when you know yourself 100% then you should start doing. It is not strongly sequential. The way we've approached this is commence with the right actions. That's doing, yes. And keep on refining. Then the right actions with the right attitude. This helps us to feel the right atma. And then the right ananda. Shared simply, 
the karma yoga leads to the jnana yoga. That is the finality of Bhagavad Gita. The section that we are in right now is transitioning us from being self-centric, that small s self, to divinity-centric, to revolve around that. Not one, rather that. In this section, from chapters 7 to 12, chapter 8 is unique. Some would describe this as complicated. Some would describe this as unusual. It is unique in how it's teaching us about the implication of our thinking. We are thinking about thinking, but the picture that Sri Krishna is creating is about the implication of our thinking. In verse 22, he shared, Tu. Tell me in Hindi what Tu means. <laughs> it's like a friendly you. <laughs> tu is teaching you. <laughs> but Tu in this context means indeed. There's an emphasis. If you want to be divinity centric, Bhaktya. Ananyaya labhyaha. One can be divinity centric if one loves divinity. That too is most logical. Whatever you love, you act for, you speak about, think about. Last week, when I was in Chantilly, we were exploring the Moksha Pata, and one of the discussion subjects I shared with everyone, what does Moksha mean to you? And then I shared my reflection also, and I shared it, is loving myself completely. Moksha is loving myself completely. The practicality of this is to love myself Enough to love the divinity that is me. I love my face. That's why I shave. I love my teeth. That's why I brush my teeth. I love my mind. That's why I read, write, and reflect, etc. To love myself completely. Many of the verses we've explored, Sri Krishna is sharing, I live inside of you. I live in all. Factually, that's not true. There's no such thing as in and out for divinity, but we're oriented towards that. To love oneself completely. I know that we're deep into Bhagavad Gita and some find practicing this difficult. So I'll share a few more thoughts before we get into the next verse. The next verse has no content to it. It is an instructive verse. <laughs> I know this, which is why I'm taking my time right now. Vivichi, you're going to run out of time. <laughs> the way to love oneself completely is to need to be liked and loved less. If I am acting, speaking, thinking in a way that I need to be liked, even more dangerous, I need to be loved, I will not love myself completely. All that will happen is I will dislike myself more, dislove myself more. This is felt as insecurity. If you need to be liked and loved by those who are insecure, what do you think is going to happen to you? If you still need to be liked and loved, then be liked and loved by those who are secure. 
they are the ones who like you and love you more completely. They don't have a relationship for, with you for them. They have a relationship with you for you. All of a sudden, how we're thinking changes, yes? In which direction our time is going? There is no combination or permutation of that which is secular that will make us feel liked and loved enough. No article, being, circumstance, no body, mind, intellect. I know you already know this. You just need to be told this in front of everyone. You need to see it. You need to write this down. What is moksha? It is loving oneself completely. To think that Sri Krishna lives in your blood, lives in your thought. Verse 23, this is like being at the airport. Now you have a choice to make. Do you want to come on a yatra, which is a pilgrimage? Or do you want to go on vacation to be a tourist? These are the exits. The right exit, we're going on our yatra. The left exit, you're going on your vacation. I'm saying you're going on it because I'm not coming. <laughs> Yatra kale tuana vrittim avrittim cheva yoginaha prayata yanti tam kalam vakshami bharatarshabha. I'll read the translation. Now, at that time of departing, the yogis go there to never return and there to return. Those paths I will now tell you about. O oh, great bull, O oh, great leader, O oh, great seeker. Sri Krishna is sharing with us the impact of our thinking, that our thinking leads to becoming, leads to developing. Now he's telling Prince Arjuna, I've already taught you this, but I'm going to make this visual. I'm going to show you this photograph, and then you can choose what you want to think about. As you're thinking about your choices, one of your choices will lead to finality. Your journeying will lead to joy. The other, the other choice, your journeying will lead you to come back to journeying, which will lead you to come back to journeying, which will lead you to come back to journeying. Shall I continue? Which will lead you to come back to journeying. Do you know for how long? <laughs> Those verses have been covered already. You are Bharata, the one whose nature is light. You are Rishabha, the best. If you're the best, then choose the best. Final reflection, what does Tu mean? Tell me in Hindi what Tu means again. Your best friend, Sri Krishna, is telling you you are the best. So choose the best. From inspiration to application, your application was to reflect on which year-long course you are going to be part of. And who are you going to request to be part of this year-long course with? 
Have you all decided? Fizi bebe chinani. You told us not to be liked and loved. We don't need a study buddy. <laughs> From the age of zero to 23, the purpose of one's life is still to be happy, but how to be happy is called vrata samyama. Samyama means to train. Vrata means commitment. Only when one is trained in commitment can they go from avidya to moksha, forgetfulness to joy. Your application for this morning. Now that Bhagavan Krishna, or you know that Bhagavan Krishna is in your thoughts, how proud do you think Bhagavan Krishna is of you? How proud do you think Bhagavan Krishna is of you? You interpret this, you implement this in your own way. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene. Be Shri Krishna. Be joy.